bombing of Germany has long been an affair of day and night attacks, but now, with the Germans beaten back within their own frontiers, that bombing has become more intensive and more inescapable than ever. These formations, flying forts of the 8th American Army Air Force, are on their way to Dresden. Their mission was a follow-up of the night attack just previously delivered by the RAF. The attacks on Dresden, in fact, were notable feats of cooperation, not only between the Anglo-American Air Forces, but also between them and their comrades of the Red Army, which was at this moment only 50 miles beyond Dresden to the east. The Americans approaching the city found fires still burning from the RAF's night attack, with 500 pounders and with incendiaries, in the face of considerable flak and in spite of cloud, they now added fuel to the flames and yet more destruction to the chaos already caused. Air Force went to Dresden on the night of the 13th, 14th of February, their force consisted of more than 800 Lancasters and other heavy bombers. The attack was made in two waves, the first wave bombing through cloud by instruments. When the second wave came in, the cloud had moved away and our crew saw quite clearly how accurate the work of the first wave had been. Fires were still raging, there was a lot of smoke, but as HE and incendiaries went down, old fires blazed brighter still and new fires started up. It was during this attack that the Germans sent up a new kind of scarecrow, a device that makes a big burst in the air and is supposed to look like an aircraft blowing up after being hit by flak. The Hun is ingenious, but never a very good psychologist. The Russians must certainly have had quite a good view of the RAF attacks, for our own crews reported that on their way home, Dresden's fires were clearly visible from over a hundred miles away. <laughs> 